this is the second module of chapter 1. In module 1, you have learned three types of errors such as absolute error, relative error and percentage error. All these errors are calculated for a single number, but in this module you will learn the propagation of error during arithmetic computation such as addition, subtraction, multiplication and division. And you will see that during arithmetic computation the error will increase. So, we have to take special care to reduce the errors during arithmetic computations. Also, for a function of several variables, if one or more variables contain errors, then the error will increase to the entire function during computation. Now, we discuss addition of two or more numbers and we will show that how the errors will propagated or generated in the resultant number. Now, we discuss about the propagation of errors during summation of two or more numbers. Let us consider n exact numbers capital X 1 to capital X n and their corresponding approximate number b small x 1 to small x n. Let us assume that delta x 1 up to delta x n with the absolute errors in the corresponding measure and it is assumed that the capital X represents the sum of n exact numbers and small x represents the sum of n approximate numbers then the absolute error is capital X minus small x that one is given by this expression. Note that the right hand side of the expression denote, denotes the absolute error of individual numbers. That means, the absolute error in summation of n numbers is equal to the sum of the absolute errors in individual numbers which is given by equation 1. Similarly, the error in difference of two numbers is given by this expression. Let capital X equal to x 1 minus x 2 which is the exact value of the resultant number and small x represent the approximate value of the resultant number. Then by similar process it is shown that the absolute error in the difference is equal to the sum of the absolute error in the individual numbers. That means, this errors generation of error is same as the generation of errors in summation. Let us consider the product of two numbers capital X 1 and capital X 2 be two numbers exact numbers and the product is given by this expression. Now, the absolute error of this product is given by this expression which is less than or equal to absolute value of x 1 into delta x 2 plus absolute value of x 2 into absolute error in x 1 plus the product of the absolute errors. It is obvious that the absolute error delta x 1 and delta x 2 both are very small quantity. So, it discard this term and whole things is divided by the approximate value x 1 into x 2 then the entire expression is given by this expression. Note that in this expression the left hand side represents the relative error in the product of two numbers and right hand side represents the sum of relative errors occurs in individual numbers. Now, let us consider the quotient of two numbers capital N x represents the quotient of two exact number x 1 and x 2. Similarly, small x represents the approximation of the quotient of two approximate numbers x 1 and x 2. Their absolute error is given by this expression and whole things is divided by the approximate number small x. Then the expression becomes uh, this form. Note that the first term in the last expression is approximately equal to 1. Therefore, after simplification we can say that the relative error in the quotient is equal to the sum of individual relative errors in the individual number x 1 and x 2. Let us consider a function of several variables. So, y v f function contains n independent variables x 1, x 2 up to x n. It is assumed that the function f is differentiable and let delta x i be the errors occur in the ith variable x i for any i between 1 and n. Then the absolute error delta y in y is given by this expression that, that means the y plus delta y equal to function of these variables. 
Now, if we expand this function by Taylor series method, the first term of this expansion is nothing but y. That means, uh, the expression is approximated by this uh, expression, the first one is y plus the second expression and we discarded the second and higher order differences of absolute errors. So, after simplification, the absolute error on y is given by this expression that means summation over del f del x i into delta x i. That means, sum of the absolute error uh, which is multiplied by the directional derivative of f along x i. Now, we considered two serious cases which are appears in the numerical computations. The care should be taken to the following two cases during arithmetic operations. The first one is when two nearly equal numbers are subtracted, this is one case, one serious case and other serious case is when division is made by a very small divisor compared to the dividend. So, this should be remembered that in significant error is more serious than round of error. Let us consider one example to illustrate uh, this situations. Now, we have to find out the roots of the equation x square minus 1500 x plus 0 0.5 equal to 0. The root of this equation is given by this formula 1500 plus minus square root of 1500 square minus 2 whole divided by 2. Now, we assume that our computational methods can store the value up to 4 significant digits. Then 1500 square of this number minus 2 can be represented in this form and that one is nothing but 0 0.2250 into 10 to the power 7 which is the square of 1500 minus 2 is converted to 4 decimal places into 10 to the power 7 that means this becomes 0. After simplification it becomes 0 0.2250 into 10 to the power 7 that means that 2 is uh, cut off from this number. Thus, the square root of 1500 square minus 2 is equal to 0 0.1500 into 10 to the power 4. This one correct up to 4 decimal places. That means, the roots are given by this expression after simplification. That means, when we are taking the plus sign, the one root is 0 0.1500 into 10 to the power 4 and second root is nothing but 0. Note that 0 is not the root of the given equation. So, the question is how we can overcome uh, from this kind of errors. So, there is one alternative method to avoid this type of situations that means, we can use this type of special method to avoid or to get the another roots. That means, to find out the correct root that means, the second root we consider the minus sign before the uh, discriminant. And in this expression, we multiplied numerator and de denominator by the conjugate of the numerator and after simplification, it becomes 0 0.0033333. So, note that this is the smaller root 0 0.0003333. Hence, the smaller root of the equation is 0 0.0003333 correct up to 4 significant figures and it is more close to the exact root. That means, the roots of the equations are 0 0.1500 into 10 to the power 4 and other root is triple 0 and 3333. Now, we consider normalized floating point number. This is a very important issue in computer arithmetic. In this number, every number is converted to a proper fraction and first non-zero digit should be there after decimal point and the whole number is multiplied by something to the power 10. So, for example, we have considered one number 3876.23 and the entire number is converted converted to the number 0 0.387623 into 10 to the power 4. The number 0 0.387623 is called the mantissimo and the 4 is called the exponent in the number. And in computer representation, this number is represented uh, in the form 0.387623E4. That means, the 10 to the power 4 is replaced by E4. Now, we discuss about the addition of normalized floating point numbers. There are two major steps for this case. 
if two numbers have same exponent, then the mantis are added directly and the exponent of the added number is either exponent. And second step is if the exponent are different, then the lower exponent is shifted to the higher exponent by adjusting the mantis and then the above rule is used to add the numbers. Now, let us consider some example for different cases to explain the addition of normalized floating point number. In case 1, we have considered two numbers with the same exponent 10 to the power 15. Since the exponent are same, then we can add the numbers or we can add the mantis directly. The sum is 0.7554E15. Now, let us consider second case. In this case also, the exponent are same that means 10. Now, we add the mantis directly and the sum is 1.4199E10. But we have assumed that our computer can store only 4 significant figures. In this number, the mantis contain 5 significant figures. So, we have to reduce 1 significant figure. So, if we discard the last 9 from the mantis, then the number becomes this one 0.1419 and the mantis is adjusted by uh, to the exponent by considering E11. Here, the digit last digit 9 is completely discarded. Note that the mantis is not rounded off. In case 3, we consider two numbers with different exponent. The first number has exponent 3 and second number it is 8. Now, the first number is converted to highest exponent number. That means, the first number is converted to 0.0000E8 and second number remains unchanged and their sum is 0.3218E8. That means, the resultant number is nothing but the second number. That means, the first number is already discarded from the summation. That is, there is no role in the summation of the numbers. In case 4, this is very interesting. In this case, we have considered two number with same exponent 99. After addition, the mantis becomes 1.4772 and exponent is 99 but to round it off or to represent the mantis into four significant digits, the digit 2 is discarded from the number and the mantis is adjusted to four decimal places and exponent is adjusted to 100. But if the machine <coughs> does not support the exponent more than 99, then this number cannot be stored into the computer and this situation is called an overflow condition. In this case, the computer will generate an error meshes called overflow meshes. In this module, we have discussed about the propagation or generation of error during arithmetic computations such as addition, subtraction, multiplication and divisions. Also, we have discussed about the floating point arithmetic of real numbers and we have also shown the overflow cases. The overflow cases is a very serious problem in computer arithmetic. Also, we have discussed in the text that the common laws of mathematics such as associative laws, distributive laws, etcetera, which are valid in general mathematics or algebra, but these laws are not valid in computer arithmetic due to finite representation of numbers into computer memory. In chapter 2, we shall discuss different beautiful methods for interpolation.